Blaine Gilmer and Chris Lee of Southeastern 14 here to continue our preview series of SEC football teams for the 2023 season. Now we're doing this in mid-January. So a lot could change because a lot always changes with the portal. But as we sit here doing this in January, a lot has changed for Florida, uh, probably more bad than good. And, and look, I've been higher on Florida than you have the last year or two. Um, so let, let's get that out of the way. And I, I do think that the long-term trajectory under Billy Napier is probably better than you think it is. But even with that said, I did not like the way the Gators ended last season. The offseason has included some key loss of, of big parts and, and, and quarterback chaos and all kinds of stuff. This is a program in a weird place again, as we do this in January of 2023. Yeah, I had Florida uh, last year. I had them going five and seven preseason. They ended up going six and six in the regular, but ended up getting that seventh loss in the bowl game. Uh, it's just hard whenever you're a first, first-time first head coach in the SEC. I mean, uh, you know, people people look at what the – what who's the standard bearers of, of the SEC over the last time, Nick Saban, look at his first year. I mean, he lost to ULM in Alabama or his first year coming to Alabama. And it took a while to get that going. It took him a year. Um, Kirby smart at Georgia. He went eight and five. His first year took him a year. I knew with what Dan Mullen had left there that it was going to take uh, Billy Napier a little bit of time. He's trying to do his best to put his fingerprints on that program. Chris, whether that comes in recruiting and, Listen, we got to talk a little bit about that with the Jaden Rashada uh, saga that has gone on, and he's now been released of his um, letter of intent. But that is kind of a black eye for the Florida program at this point in time. But as you said, with an exodus of of talent now, it's incumbent upon Billy Napier to really lean upon whatever culture he was able to build in year one. And I think they honestly got rid of uh, some, some people through the portal. Not all portal uh, exits are bad, Chris. Sometimes you're, yeah. you're, it's addition by subtraction. I won't name names, but there were some guys that, that left that Florida program that I think Florida is actually going to benefit from them not being there uh, anymore. But And they did make some key additions via the portal in, so we'll talk about both of those specifically up front on the offensive line. But listen, Billy Napier, uh, year two. Uh, I hope that all college football coaches get a little bit of patience, but definitely some drama this offseason and after year one there for the Florida Gators. Well, I like what you said about not all portal subtractions are, are bad. I mean, this is the team that I thought Dan Mullen left with the questionable culture uh, yeah. that's probably being kind. Billy Napier is not that kind of coach. He's going to bring discipline and some things to the Gators that have been needed. And so sometimes that takes a while. But let's start at quarterback. Anthony Richardson went the distance, uh, had some – Flashes of great things, some flashes of very ordinary things, and is going to probably be a first rounder because of the potential. Never quite reaches potential as a polished type of passer in Gainesville. Uh, now it'll be Graham Mertz, who had a very up and down career at Wisconsin after being a very, very highly touted kid coming out of high school a few years back. I just don't think Billy Napier could have imagined if you told him going into year year two, okay, not only are you not going to have Anthony Richardson, but uh, Jalen Kitna is going to be gone mm -hmm. from your rosters because of some unfortunate legal troubles that, that came upon him during the offseason. Uh, and now they're down to three scholarship quarterbacks, the two most likely to play, Graham Mertz and, and then Jack Miller, Graham Mertz, trans – transfers this offseason from Wisconsin, one of the most highly heralded recruits ever in Wisconsin history. The career didn't necessarily pan out and live up to that hype there during his time for a career 59.5% completion uh, on his career. He did, did go over 2,100 yards passing this year, but didn't necessarily value the football, 19 touchdowns to 10 interceptions, um, you know, 38. 38 touchdowns, 26 interceptions for his career, Chris. So 
and only 7.0 yards per attempt. Now, as I told you when we were getting ready for this, he wasn't calling the plays, so he can't call the shots down the field. Billy Napier is going to call some shots down the field, so Graham Mertz is going to get a chance to show off his arm and, and air it out, but I don't know that it just – exudes confidence if you're if you're looking at the quarterback position for Florida with what they experienced this offseason. What do you make about the pieces around them? I mean, Montrell Johnson Jr. I think is back. I think Ricky Pearsall is back for another year. That seems like there are some pieces here. Florida did have a very good running attack for a good bit of the year. Now some of that was based on Richardson's hey. legs, but they had a lot of guys Etienne, who had nice seasons, you you would see Florida really gash people at times, but um, you have to think the personnel, and especially with the losses on the offensive line, isn't quite what the Gators had inning last season. Yeah, the, they're they're losing four starters uh, on the offensive line, and I think that you know whether you're even if you're the most established of programs, right, and the culture is just rock solid, anytime you're replacing that kind of experience and that kind of physicality that they had, because let, let me tell you something, Florida was extremely physical up front uh, running the yes. football last year and did did a very good job in that. Now, you know, they're going to bring uh, Aguacan back, Kinsley Aguacan back, but other than that, it's kind of some, some unknowns. Now, they did go out and get uh, Micah Makua, Muscuza, uh from Baylor, he's slated to go in there at the left guard position, and then Damian George transfers over from Alabama, who could you know slot in at that right tackle is where most people are, are projecting him to be, and it's just going to be can you how well can you mesh that because I don't think that with the receivers that Florida has right now. Uh, and the quarterback questions, I don't think you're going to just see this Florida team air it out tremendously. That wasn't the strength of their team last year, even with a quarterback who, uh, as you pointed out, is getting first-round buzz and Anthony Richardson. Um, but guys like guys like Ricky Pearsall and Xavier Henderson, um, Caleb Douglas, these are all guys who are more, in my opinion, more possession-type guys, guys that are going to be chain movers, and that's fine. But – where are the explosive plays going to come from? I think it's going to be, you know, how fast can Billy Napier get that offensive line to gel? Because I do like Montreal Johnson and I do like uh, Etienne running the football. I thought Etienne was remarkable. He just he would just refuse to be tackled at times last year, Chris. Yeah. It seems like, and for a freshman in the SEC last year, those legs just kept churning and going. So um, I think the run game, it's going to have to be, it's incumbent upon Florida to be able to est establish it and be able to get people to respect it so they can hit some of those play action passes behind behind people's defense. All right, defense, they weren't great there, and they lose some dudes. Rashad Torrance, NFL. Trey Dean III, NFL. Ventrell Miller, NFL. Gervon Dexter, NFL. Brenton Cox kicked off the team late in the year. A lot of guys, in fact, that is, what, four of their top five tacklers gone. Cox was, I think, ninth and, of course, only played eight games. Uh, you do get Jason Marshall Jr. back, um, Antoine Powell Ryland, some guys like that that have played there, but it is not what we're used to in Florida defenses. No, and I think that what you what the dis, most disappointing thing if you're Billy Napier, right? If he, I think if you had to pin Billy Napier down, give him a little truth serum, and say what are you most uh, disappointed in, I think he, he would say that the inability to stop the run. They got gashed uh, last year in the in the running game at different times, and that's just that's just not Florida football, right? Florida is usually yeah. very good on both sides of the ball in, in the trenches. Uh, you mentioned Gervin Dexter. He's going to the pros, one of their more athletic guys. Brenton Cox, as you mentioned, since he even ever since he transferred from Georgia, he's been a he's been kind of a staple there. And finally, uh, you know, Billy Napier had, had enough of his antics and he got he got kicked off the team. But when it comes down to it, the linebacker position on the edge is very thin for Florida. They do have a princely, uh, a man a million coming back that is a guy who's long, who's athletic, um, but 
other than that, it's a lot of unproven guys uh, behind him, and not some, not a, not a deal that you're really excited about. He's more of a defensive end type of five technique, but in terms of the stand up outside linebacker position that you see this year, just not a whole lot of reps uh, that have that have been there. Um, so. They may even be looking for people to to move from the inside linebacker position out to that position. They've got a they've got some people that have been able to to transfer in. Whether it's uh, Taraja Mitchell from Ohio State that that is you know transferred into this Florida program, he brings some uh, some some athleticism there, maybe some versatility. Um, and they've they've got guys that they've recruited. In the lat in previous classes, Shamar James, when Billy Napier first got there, that was a big recruiting win for Florida over Georgia. Georgia really wanted him. He can maybe have some versatility in Scooby Williams as well, but uh, they're gonna have to be able to stop the run better. But it's just the depth that you don't see on this Florida defense. They're gonna have to manufacture that depth, and they're going to have to grow up quickly with a lot of these guys who are inexperienced. They do bring it back, uh, Kamari Wilson. But you talk about some some guys leaving the program. Um, you know, they they've had they've they've had Kamar Will Coxon, other guys like that that they brought in a, a couple recruiting classes ago that they thought were going to be kind of staples of this Florida program going forward and just didn't pan out for him. So Billy Napier really going to have to maybe even lean on some of these incoming freshmen. They did have the 14th ranked recruiting class in the country, Chris. So a good influx of talent, maybe definitely not where Florida wants to be. They're used to being when Florida's elite, they're in the top 10, well inside the top 10 recruiting wise. Um, but, you know, we'll see, see if he can improve upon that. Yeah, and another name there on defense, and uh, my apologies if you mentioned this. I was trying to get to the schedule quickly uh, because I'd forgotten to pull that up. But Desmond Watson, another kid yeah. that interested massive. to see what he can do. He's <laughs> massive, massive, massive. Okay, I want to see schedule. what weight he plays at. I want to see what weight he plays yeah. at. It was he was billed over four hundred pounds, and just be honest, that's great, but you can't play at that weight uh, in the SEC. Yeah. People just tempo you to death. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what he ends up coming coming in and playing, but. Uh, I'm, you know, I want to see this Florida team just have more fight on defense when it comes to stopping the run early in the season. Yep, the schedule, my goodness. We talked a minute ago about Auburn as we did Auburn right before we did this one. Florida's schedule, okay, the rematch with Utah that yeah. the Billy Napier era started very well with the win there, and you're thinking, okay, um, that one is in Utah this time. They get McNeese, who traditionally is one of the better FCS teams. I think they've dropped off a little bit recently. I have no idea what they'll be next year. Then they, they get Tennessee. Uh, that That's in the swamp of this time, um, which helps. Charlotte, yeah. which is a rebuilding team, uh, fired Will Healy last year. I think, I can't remember if they hired Peter Rosamondo or if they went elsewhere. Um, he was the interim. Then at Kentucky, Vandy, which beat. Florida last year in Nashville at South Carolina by week. Georgia and Jacksonville, Arkansas at home at LSU at Missouri, Florida State. I mean, my goodness, I I'm looking at just should be layup games. I'm seeing McNeese in week two and Charlotte in week four. And really, that is about it. Yeah, it's a. Uh... It's tough. It's tough sledding, you know. When you got the the back to back defending national champions uh, in your division, a rivalry game, but with with Georgia, you got LSU as a crossover every year. Who, by the way, was the West champions last year. Yep. So you know, it's just not it's just not an easy deal uh, when you come to Florida. But but that's expected, right? Because Chris, the standard is so high and it should be at Florida mm -hmm. because there's so much talent inside the state there. They should be recruiting their tails off year in and year out. And when they're most successful, they are. Uh, and they just haven't, they just haven't reached that kind of, that, that kind of success in a little while. Now, remember it's not too, too far off. Uh, they did, they did win the sec East uh, during the, the COVID year and pushed Alabama. W one of the better Alabama teams in recent yep. memory, they pushed them to the brink. I mean, I think it was 52, 46, something, something crazy along those, uh, those lines, a high scoring game, but things went downhill in a hurry uh, for, 
for that Dan Mullen squad. And now Billy Napier is still in the process of kind of picking up the the pieces, uh, so to speak. But, you know, can can guys that that transferred in like like Deuce Spurlock at linebacker, like Cameron Jackson at, at defensive line uh, coming from Michigan and Memphis, um, respectively, can those guys bring some toughness? Right? Can they bring some of that uh, some of that grit that Florida seemingly was missing a little bit up front defensively last year? So uh, they did lose some guys as well. Um, that that you know whether it's uh, Dewan Black, Ventro Miller, the second part of that, uh, the second level of that defense. So as always, now it's about roster management. And how can you make all the pieces fit? They may not be done in the portal. There's another portal window coming, but tough, uh, tough sledding likely in uh, in 2023. But I would encourage Florida fans not to not to rush to judgment or give up on uh, Billy Napier because it was not the easiest of uh, rebuilds or easiest of uh, roster situations that he was that he was handed when he when he got there. And Chris, we do have to address the the Jaden Rashada thing, okay, with the Florida yeah. Collective. Thirteen million dollars is what is being floated around there that was promised to him. It's not necessarily being outright refuted uh, by by the UF uh, UF Collective. Um, it's just crazy to me that numbers are being uh, uh, floated around, and I feel bad for Billy Napier in this deal because, listen, technically by the letter of the law, coaches are not supposed to be involved in these decisions with the with the collectives and all that kind of stuff and it felt to me like kind of a runaway train that he got he jumped on a little bit late and tried to tried to help you know smooth things over and it just didn't work out they've released Jaden Rashada from his letter of intent but Chris I think they were kind of counting on okay Graham Mertz is going to be the guy. We're going to have him in there. He's experienced, and we're going to get Jaden Rashada in here early, let him learn the system, and maybe by mid-year he might be ready to roll. He might have the experience and things like that and be – but now all that's out the window, and you just kind of got to hope for the best uh, with a with a guy who's uh, transferring in, you know, that does have experience but hadn't had terrific experience. So I think that's – a that's a disappointment this offseason, the whole Jaden Rashada debacle, regardless of, of whether you believe the numbers or not. Well, I, I think the way the whole season progressed was a disappointment to me. Um, what I've heard on Napier is that the league respects what he's trying to do and is doing, and uh, they feel like he can get Florida back to where Florida was, and you see them – beat Utah, the opening game. Uh, they're playing really well. I mean, you can go back and look at our previews, and we get to early to mid November. I said, guys, this Florida team's about to take off. It's running the ball well. He's establishing his culture, their discipline. And then they show up in Nashville on a cold day uh, against Vanderbilt. I was there for that game and just didn't bring it. And it feel like felt like the wheels fell off from that point on. Uh, lost to Florida State and, and then just no showed for the bowl game with a lot of opt outs against Oregon State. Get beat thirty to three. You have the events of the off season with the, the offensive line transfers with the Rashada deal, and it leaves a lot more questions, Blaine, than than I thought we would have uh, just as recently as two months ago. As we do this in in mid January. I don't. I don't think anybody would have thought that Anthony Richardson would have went pro after this year. I, I certainly didn't expect it. I, I thought. I thought he would have okay year two with Billy Napier. Let's get some growth. Let's let's uh, you know build some rapport with these receivers and things like that. But I will credit Billy Napier. I think he's brought in the area that he needed to uh, to address was toughness on the defensive side of the ball, being able to stop the run and bringing in guys you know like like Deuce Spurlock. I mentioned from from Michigan, like Cameron uh, Jackson on the defensive line from Memphis, and then even all the way back when the the transfer portal window first got started, they brought in a, a guy who was you know highly touted uh, out of high school, and Caleb Banks, uh, who was at, at Louisville, who's you know now comes into Florida. So they're trying to address some needs up front, uh, and we'll see if they're able to do that better. But running the football and stopping the run are going to be the the two singular biggest keys for Florida in 2023 and how that goes, uh, that their season will be predicated upon that. 
We are previewing every single SEC team for 2023 in January. Again, we will update those later, I'm sure, as we get closer to the season, as the portal settles. But best way to catch your team or all the teams is hit that subscribe button. Also hit the like button. That helps us get noticed. We also cover baseball heavily and basketball really heavily. We are in the middle of predicting every single game in conference play for basketball and recapping all those. So anyway, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our stuff. He's Blaine Gilmer. I'm Chris Lee. We are Southeastern 14, and we will see you again very soon.